Hello and welcome to episode 74, today is kinda special, because we will be reviewing Nintendo's final game and watch, from the beautiful color screen series of handhelds, and this amazing game is called, The Legend of Zelda. With it being first offered for sale November 12, 2021, this game was a celebration of the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda debuting on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Sales figures for the game and watch are unknown, however the unit is still available in stores at retail or discounted prices. But, before we delve into today's star and focus, I'd like to briefly reveal what last week's photo quiz question was, in the section we call what in the world. And if I had to guess at the people's ability to know what this is, I'd say that there's a high likelihood you all picked up on the Zelda theme thing going on here, even if you couldn't put your finger on exactly what it is. But maybe you all kinda struggled on the actual item, so do you know what it is yet? The camera lens is the giveaway to me, even before we saw the second lens appear as the image drew back to reveal the whole item. It is of course the new 3DS, Hyrule version, from Nintendo, and this is a handsome handheld, even if I say so myself. Interestingly, and accidentally I actually received two of these 3DSs at launch by mistake, however I decided not to return the duplicate for a refund, which I normally would have, as it was such a nice attractive system. So heading right back over to the Legend of Zelda game and watch, we see the game select and menu screen is showing, and at the very top of that list is the system's primary game, and it is a near perfect duplication of the original Nintendo Entertainment System version. This game and watch, The Legend of Zelda is more substantial than its predecessor from 2020, and is also a better fit for the hardware's limitations. The design includes three games, the first being the original Legend of Zelda, its NES adventure sequel, and the monochrome Game Boy entry, Link's Awakening. Much like the Mario Color Screen Edition, this device includes a digital clock, which is also playable, a classic game and watch minigame, based on Vermin, or Exterminator by Mego, but with Zelda-inspired art, and a retro metal-plated, plastic-shelled case, the throwback industrial design being gently improved by the inclusion of the USB-C slot for charging the internal battery. I thought long and hard on how to approach this game and watch review, I decided that listing all the various easter eggs, cheats, and endless lifes would be pointless, even though they're super fun to find. I'm sure there are a multitude of such shows and videos on YouTube, but instead, I consider that many younger gamers might actually like to play this game for real. Zelda has a modern following, and many might have shied away from this antiquated game. I've dropped in the original guide, showing the maps, treasures, hearts, weapons and enemies and tied it to the review because the game is actually very rewarding, and with help, can be as entertaining today as it was 35 years ago. Most directions in the instruction guide still stand and are as valid today as back then, the upgraded game and watch layout, actually copied and mimicked the old Nintendo Entertainment System controller, with both button placement and functionality. And although miniaturized, the system retains both the main and sub-screen displays. Using both skillfully will enable this epic adventure through the various worlds to be enjoyable while still being a challenge. The quest starts in the overworld, made up of lush green forests, crystal clear lakes and sprawling meadows, but later the journey shifts to the dark underworld, one of labyrinths and mazes, where fragments of the Triforce must be sought and collected. And as with any quest, or any journey, a map is essential. Knowing where to go is different to knowing what to do and look for, so in my opinion, if you're new to this game or haven't done it in a while, look up the maps to guide you on your way. Also knowing some basic battling skills, including which weapons you can get and how to upgrade them, together with the use of all the treasures you'll find is a fantastic part of the legend experience. The use of the shield and later the magic shield in defending our hero Link, from most of the enemies he'll encounter is a basic strategy, the white hearts will show you how wounded Link is, so knowing when and where to restore his health becomes a side quest in itself. The money used in this kingdom is rubies or rupees, these crystal treasures can be used to buy and upgrade Link's arsenal as he levels up to face the mighty Ganon. And what quest would be complete without fairies, magic keys, ladders to span the abyss and rafts to sail across lakes and seas. The map is obviously important, we've already said that, but tie that to a compass for directions and the path becomes much clearer, as well as wearing one of two magic rings can protect you from injury and damage, such are the treasures for all who seek this quest. And while I don't want to make this simply a Legend of Zelda guide, I do want to inspire others to follow in our footsteps and enjoy the genesis of this franchise. From the very first screen of the map, to seeking out the Triforce pieces in the underworld and completing the quest. With all the wonderful worlds to navigate and explore, and the multi-layered progression that simply entices you in, all this power, responsibility and duty together with tons of excitement starts right here. May this legendary quest begin once again. 
And as with the previous Super Mario Bros. offering, this device uses many beautifully arranged Zelda art-inspired screens for the transfer to sleep mode. The screen can be viewed in both full screen or original, depending on the level of authenticity the player desires. Another unique, but super effective touch is the inclusion of a lit Triforce on the reverse of the unit while powered up, superfluous for sure, but what attention to detail, I simply love it. And as previously mentioned, the classic game and watch offering is a re-envisioned take on the 1980s silver series called Vermin, or in North American Exterminator from Mego, a basic whack-a-mole style game. The second Zelda offering was the follow-up game to the original Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link, which altered certain elements of gameplay, most notably affecting movement and combat. Traveling across a world map would lead to enemy encounters which took place on a side-scrolling field of play rather than the top-down perspective for which the series became known. Next up is The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, which is a 1993 action-adventure game developed and published by Nintendo for the original Game Boy. It is the first installment in the Legend of Zelda series for a handheld game console. Link's Awakening is one of the few Zelda games not to take place in the land of Hyrule, and it does not feature Princess Zelda or the Triforce Relic. Instead, the protagonist, Link begins the game stranded on Kahalint Island, a place guarded by a whale-like deity called the Windfish. Assuming the role of Link, the player fights monsters and solves puzzles while searching for eight musical instruments that will awaken the sleeping wind fish and allow him to escape from the island. Sadly the color DX version was not chosen that would have taken full advantage of this system's beautiful backlit color screen. Another frequent complaint about this 35th anniversary edition of Zelda is the absence of the original game and watch, multi-screen offering, and while I agree, I feel the small screen might not have been the ideal medium to show off the original double screen version, despite it being a very impressive Zelda game in its own right. Well, as this episode draws to a conclusion, I feel it necessary to mention that the legacy, and therefore the journey continues, with the pending release of Zelda's, Tears of the Kingdom, giving all of us another adventure, another quest to embark upon and therefore something to look forward to. And that brings us to this week's photo quiz question we on this channel like to call, what in the world? And, if you think you know what it is, by all means comment in the section below, if not, then be sure to tune into next week's episode and find out. Well, with a tinge of sadness we wrap up not only today's episode on this game and watch, but this also finishes up every episode on all the game and watches ever, either issued, bought or even won in competitions, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for your company, I really mean it.